Hello and welcome back to another episode of our MotoGP 20 career mode and here we are for episode number 6 I think it is now. So first things first, obviously we've not got anything in development right now so obviously we want to fix that so let's have a look then. So we've got 2806 which I think is actually, actually I think that might be enough now to upgrade the engine. So if we add this up that's 900, that's 1800 then added together plus another 550. Yeah. Right, so we actually don't need to do any free practice sessions anymore. I've just noticed that. So, but anyway, what should be upgrade? I think. How long will this take? If I put everyone here, four weeks for that. So I've upgraded this part now. The uh, the lightning bolt, whatever that is. I guess that's more power, maybe. Is it? Also, we've got to wait for these to be finished before we can upgrade anything else. So we're gonna to have to wait four weeks. So we'll advance a week further ahead. Ah, so here we are then now, we're at the Grand Prix of Finland. So actually, we get to go to the Kimi ring for this episode, but there is a notification on the personal manager front. Oh, we've received a proposal. Hang on. So SkyVR46 is interested, is offering us a contract for next season. Of for next season. It's the Moto3 team, so I don't want to be signing on this. Because I don't want to stay Moto3 for two seasons. So we'll leave this for now. But anyway, without further ado then, we'll head into Finland, and we actually don't have to do the practice programs, but since it's a new circuit, I am going to do some laps in practice anyway, so that I can learn it, see how I am in terms of the pace, because obviously I've not really raced this track much before. So I basically just did about five laps of the track there, and in the end we were only about two tenths off Suzuki, so it's not too bad, it's not as bad as I thought. The AI are ridiculously overpowered in Sector 2, but... Other than that, that, I'm actually faster than them everywhere else, so it could make for a very interesting weekend. The qualifying session is in fact wet, so that will definitely be another spanner in the works. The race is then dry again. I have a feeling that we're probably not going to win this one. Messi is down in 8th place in this practice session. Uh, but Suzuki, he's finally actually had the chance to top a free practice session. It's the first one you know, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't been top of. And there you go, Suzuki tops it straight away. Antonelli's third as well, so the 658 boys have really stepped up their game. Right, so we're here then in qualifying now, and we'll just head straight onto the track. Hopefully we can try and get somewhere in the front. Obviously we're going to be in the top 18, we know that, because I got straight through into Q2 here, obviously with the free practice one time, but I'm guessing we're probably going to struggle to get a decent position on the grid, so it might be the end of our pole streak, unfortunately, here today. I've got the glitch where the, uh, the rider is constantly looking backwards as well for my qualifying lap, so that's really, really helpful. I won't be. I can't seem to fix it, so that's fun. I think it fixes itself when you return to the pits, but we're currently doing a qualifying lap, so I don't particularly want to be doing that. If we go through turn one then. Up the hill towards two. Actually, well, that's turn three apparently. So I was going up towards two, but it's actually turn four that we're going up towards. So I'm not really sure about how the corners are named at this circuit. If I'm totally honest. I don't know the lines in the dry, let alone the wet as well, so I picked up a few of the lines, obviously I did manage to get second place, I didn't want to like do laps and laps and laps of practice because obviously that would be a bit boring. I think it's nice that we have a race here that could potentially spice it up a little bit and that I don't think I'll be able to win. But it, it's always possible, I mean the race is dry so that's going to play into our favour a little bit I would say. But it's really, really wet. That's why I did the practice, it was more for the race rather than qualifying. Probably going to have to do a couple of runs here in this session. Running in really wide as well in places. Actually did look behind me then because there's someone behind us, I was trying to see if they are catching up. This corner is one of the trickiest ones I find to get the turning right because it's blind as you go in. So we're coming to the end of sector 3 now. A minute 40. So I can already tell the lap time is going to be much slower than when it's dry. It's quite a long circuit actually, the Kimi Ring. We go towards the final turn then. Can I get it turned in how I want? I turn it with the rear a little bit onto the curb on the outside. It's going to be a provisional pole because we're the first person to set a time, but I don't think that's going to last. 
about six seconds off what we were doing in the practice session. Went towards the line then. Eight tenths off, so that's P8. We haven't got enough fuel to go again, but maybe I can go for one last run in the session. So then, I was unable to improve on that lap, so that's what we ended up with, the 202.699. It did manage to put us on the front page, obviously, in 8th place, which is, you know, not too bad. Our pole streak is now over, though, unfortunately. Tatsuki Suzuki takes the first pole of an AI for the year. I mean, who else would it be? Lopez has put himself second, somehow. Third for Messia, fourth for Foggia. Uh, fifth for Antonelli there, Fanati in sixth, Mina in seventh. So it's imperative that we don't get any glitch start this time. We've got to get off the line and we've got to try and pass people on the first lap. So we're down here on the grid then. And it's imperative that we don't get the glitch start this time. We've got to try and master the technique. So you've obviously got to say just out of the red revs. And then let the clutch out at the right time when the lights go out and you get a pretty good start. Eighth place. By far the worst place we've started the entire season. We've started on pole for every race except this one of course. Uh, third place is currently our worst finish back in Jerez, so if we can try and replicate that, I think that'd actually be quite a good result here. So without further ado, we will start this race, and hopefully we can try and get off to a good start. So Suzuki on the pole then, alongside him, Lopez and Messia. We've got to try and get up to Messia if we can. Obviously our championship rival. All right, and away we go. We've got the start. We've done it well. Ah, Fodge has had an amazing start as well. Look, so we go towards turn one. Round the outside of Lopez here, we're running out of road, round the outside, we're up to second position already, so Dennis Fodger leads from me in second, Suzuki on the outside there, trying to get us as we go towards the hairpin. Try and follow Fodger's line, oh, we've just been tagged, Alonso Lopez tagged us there, but we're closing right to Fodger, I'm still in power mode too, turn it back down to one, getting the slipstream on Fodger then down the straight, it's been an amazing start, we've not got the pace here at all, so we have to hit the front and try and slow down, Fodger's done that weird thing where the AI lift when you're going past them, and we're now up into the lead of the race. So when you don't get the glitch start, you do get a rocket start off the line. And obviously then you can use your racecraft to carve your way through because the AI are not particularly strong on the first lap in terms of their defensive manoeuvres and things. But Fodger is coming back at us. This is going to be a long race, I know it. It's five laps, of course, long circuit, but it's going to be a difficult race. The AI are going to be all over the back of me. Obviously I'm not taking the most optimal lines, things like that. Especially through Sector 2. Sector 1, I think I'm okay. Maybe Sector 4 as well is not too bad. But Sector 2, they are much faster than me. And Fodger's looking at the inside. He almost took us out there. Obviously, we've almost had contact already. I mean, I've just seen Masia down in 7th and Suzuki in 8th. So I'm not sure what's gone on behind us. Maybe it's been a crash or something. We've turned it too early there for turn 11. And Fodger goes round the outside. Fodger's gone up to the grass. Fodger's down. Dennis Fodger's just ran out of road and crashed. And his bike is still skidding down the track. Well, it's getting on the grass, but it could come back on the circuit. So now it's me from two Husqvarna's behind us. But that's massive. Dennis Fodger just completely goes off the circuit and crashes. Fanati's on the inside. Oh, Fanati just rammed into me. Fanati just rammed me. And he's just lost the position as well there now. It's been a chaotic start to the race. I'm not sure if that was my fault with the Fanati thing, but he just came up my inside. I couldn't avoid him. So he's now dropped back down to fourth place. So he's back up to third. So I'm guessing he'll be past Lopez soon, but Lopez having the race of his life there. Messia's down in 7th, so this has gone from me starting 8th and it's been looking like a picnic for Messia to really being terrible, terrible race for him. Well, we've just lost the lead to Lopez as we've ran wide into Turn 1. Could Alonso Lopez get his first Moto3 victory here at the Kimi ring. Oh, the inside going for Nati once again. We've not got the best run because of that, because I uh, had to deviate my line and I had to lift at the exit of the corner, but we're in the slipstream off Lopez. Can we try and get him down towards the next corner? Nati going side by side with Antonelli up the inside of Lopez we go. He just lifted like Fodger did on that straight to let us through. A bit weird that with AI, where once you try to go past them, they just sort of lift off. Yeah, through the corners they're not bothered about giving you a bit of a bash. Fodger's now back up to 23rd place. Yeah, I don't know what Dennis Fodger was doing. I think he like got caught out by me getting caught out by the corner and he just went in too hot and just ran onto the grass and see Danny went, he had too much lean angle. So over the line then, we still lead the race. We've got nine tenths of a second ahead of Alonso Lopez in second position. 58-0, pretty decent lap because of how wide we went in the, uh, the first corner. So we've definitely picked up some pace since that first free practice session. I think that probably would have been good enough to put us fastest in that session. So hopefully we don't pull away now because it's been a really good race so far battling with AI. But the result is so strange. Kimi Ring has really thrown up some surprises so far. I mean, the Husqvarna's were legitimately in third and fourth anyway before Fodger crashed. 
and uh, well far ahead of Messia, but I'm really not sure what's happened. Fodger's up to 17th, so Fodger is almost back in the points. 57-4 on that lap, so we're extending the lead. I don't know how we're getting away, to be honest. I think it's because Lopez, we were faster than him in practice anyway. I think we are just faster than Lopez, and I think he's just holding them all up. Because he got an immense start, I'm not even sure how he got... Actually, he qualified quite well. I don't, I don't know, maybe he likes the circuit, but he doesn't seem to quite have the pace that I have. We're getting away from him here. Right, so starting the final lap, then we've just put the bike down to fuel mode zero. Because we are really marginal on fuel once again. It's been a bit of a habit lately. They've really been close to running out of fuel. We've gone wide again through turn one, but obviously we've got 1.7 seconds. I think the lead might safely be ours, but I feel like this would be one track where we could lose that much time. Fodger's just got up to 15th, so Fodger is back in the race scoring points now. So fair play to Fodger. He's done a very good job to actually get back up to 15th despite the crash. So coming through the last corner then, we're going to take the first ever win here at the Kimi Ring in Moto3. Ed of Alonso Lopez in second position. He's done a fantastic job there. And I think Fanati in third, so that's really helping us out. So actually, no, Fanati was not third. He got overtaken by Antonelli. I think that must have happened when they were going side by side earlier on, perhaps. But yeah, Antonelli ends up third then. Fourth for Fanati. Fifth for Suzuki. And Messia down in sixth place, which is his worst result of the season. So it looked like at the beginning of... The, well, it looked like at the beginning of the race. It was going to be really bad for us because we were signed eighth. Fodger was about fourth, and Messia was third, so it looked like easy pickings for them. But Messia's ended up fifth, and Fodger has ended up down in 15th place after crashing out on the first lap. So that's going to take a massive swing in the championship, so we'll quickly have a look at that. But that's going to help Suzuki's cause out a bit, I think, because he's beat both of the guys he's really battling with. So in the championship now, yes, it has taken a really weird turn. Antonelli's back up to fifth in the championship now after a pretty good result. Lopez back up to eighth, obviously after... A uh, fantastic second position from himself there. We've now got a 70-point lead over Messia and 110 over Fodger. And Suzuki's only 13 points behind Fodger, so he's definitely got a realistic chance of beating Dennis in this championship now, especially after that blunder. Obviously, Suzuki lost a heap of points to him in Catalonia after his crash, and then Fodger's done exactly the same thing here in Kimi Ring. But yeah, somehow we managed to win here, which I did not expect. We've gone from 8th on the grid looking like... We might lose a heap of points to now having a 70 point lead here. Massive. We'll have a look at the constructors now. So Leopard Racing, obviously after their bad day, the first time this season I think they've lost their, well not the lost their championship lead, but they've lost points in the championship. So quite a hefty amount actually, I think they've lost about 9 points to us there. So we've actually closed up to them for the first time this season due to both riders actually having off days. I think it's the first time that one of them's not been on the podium if I'm not mistaken. But 658 Squadra course. In a third place, uh, really closing. Well, actually, have they closed up on us? I think we might be about even again. We're sort of managing the gap to them somehow. It looked like they were going to easily overtake us, but they just keep having races where they don't quite do so well. Uh, Max Racing moved back ahead of Sky VR46 after the, both their riders had a very good day. But yeah, we'll head into Part Ferme now and then back into the career hub, and we'll see what we've got to do between now and I think it's Bruno next, or it might be Austria. I don't actually know to be honest. I'll, well, we'll see anyway. So then my game actually crashed uh, while I was looking at the replay cameras, but it seems to have actually saved what's happened, so I'm really happy about that. So apologies if it seems a bit jarring to jump from sort of looking at the results screen to here, and we've skipped out Park Ferme, but it sort of crashed when I went to Park Ferme. The Park Ferme cutscene played, and then the game actually closed, and I guess in that time it actually did save what happened. So in the reputation, we gained 4,650. Obviously not as much as normal because our qualifying position wasn't great. So we gained 6,151 credits for this weekend. So yes, I'm really glad that my game did not corrupt my save file and everything saved properly when the game crashed. So uh, I will give props to Milestone for that one for obviously having a pretty good system in terms of the saving that uh, that it doesn't crash, well, that the game crash didn't corrupt my save. But anyway, we'll have a look then. We've got a notification on the personal manager front here. We've got another proposal. So we've got one from Stellgarda Max Racing as well. So then there's nothing else we can do except advance forward a week. And we've got another notification. We've got another two proposals received. Oh no, it's a new candidate available. Min Sio Choi. Now she seems just quite a bit more expensive, so I'm not going to bother. Especially since we've already got Emily Jones, I think the probably the best one that we could have so far. I'll have a look at uh, rejecting these guys then. We'll keep Emily Jones because she's a B plus, but we'll... Uh, or refuse the others, and then obviously we can look later when 
maybe when we're moving up a Tomo to him. I'm not sure how the contract system works exactly. I know obviously you can move mid-season so we can search for contracts, but I don't want to move, obviously now, into a into Petrona Sprinter Racing or anything like that or any of these other Moto2 teams that are interested. Obviously I want to move at the end of the season. So I'm not sure how exactly that works, but we might find that out a little bit later on in the season. So we'll advance forward once again and then the engine should be done. Oh, so we've got another, we got, we got another notification, we've got another proposal. Who's it from this time? Rebel KTM IO. So lots of Moto3 teams interested. I'm going to refuse them all though. What do you think we'll get? This one obviously is the most expensive, the one at the bottom. So I'll put that one on first. That's a fuel consumption reduction. This is improved delivery, actually. Although we have been struggling with the fuel, so I think I will actually put more fuel consumption on there. They're all on there, so it'll take four weeks to upgrade that part. So we'll advance to the next week again. And here we are in the Czech Republic, but we've got another proposal, so we'll have a look at that. Who is that from? That's from uh, Parts Europe Honda. Again in Moto3, so we'll give that another refusal. So we've had a lot of offers coming in now. I think it's because the rider market is open, so we can actually swap. Without further ado, I'll uh, see you at the end of free practice one because we'll have to do a lap uh, to get through into Q2 but hopefully we won't have to do too many because obviously it's Czech Republic so we do know the circuit pretty well. So then at the end of that free practice session we were fastest by 1.3 seconds ahead of Carlos Tatai in second so sometimes you do get these messed up orders but uh, Foggia actually doing out doing Messia there he's definitely going to want to bounce back from the it's a really silly mistake I actually did have a look at it on the replay and I would have shown that but uh, obviously I did have the thing with the, gri the game crashing of course when I was sort of looking through the results, I went out of the replay cameras and then it sort of just tried to crash, but it let me still advance, so not sure exactly what happened there. But uh, Alonso Lopez actually went for a move on Fodger, so Fodger left the door a bit open for him, and then because I was on the wrong line, he was gaining a lot of speed, so he sat the bike up and then he just went into hot, went onto the grass and fell off. So it was actually just a bit of an unfortunate series of events for him, actually triggered by Lopez going up his inside, but. I don't really know why he went onto the grass, because he sat up, it would have got past, past me easily probably, but then he just ran onto the grass and fell off instead, so yeah, a bit weird. So we're here in qualifying then for the Czech Republic GP. Put soft softs on of course, because it is qualifying, we'll head out to the track straight away. Hopefully we can try and get our pole position streak started again, obviously. We had been on pole for every single race of the season until Kimi Ring. Which, to be honest, it looked like I wasn't going to win there because it didn't seem like I had the pace, but I think the wet just really messed us up in qualifying. We didn't have too bad dry pace, and we could outpace Lopez, and that was the guy we actually had to beat in the end because he got his way through to second. So, fair play, he helped us out, really, by getting his best result of the season because he just sort of got in the way of everybody else. So Barry Bolt is actually behind us, but interesting. He's been he's been popping up in a few of the sessions, sort of near the front, but then he's dropped back in the race, I've noticed that. So I think sometimes the qualifying times are a little bit broken on the simulation for some riders. Like, they get really good simulated qualifying times, but then their race time simulations are not as good, so they just drop back. Sort of makes me think of uh, yesterday when I did the historic challenges. If you haven't seen that, I do recommend you go check that out. But uh, Toru Okawa... He started second and he ended up about last, so it was really weird. Like obviously his time simulation was much better than his uh, actual race simulation because he dropped all the way to the field. And he didn't crash or anything, so I'm not sure what happened. Perhaps he ran off or something, but it would have come back through the pack if he'd had the pace. Like we saw with Fodger, obviously in the previous race he crashed, but he did claw back one point. Which could be crucial in his battle with Suzuki and potentially Masir if Masir makes a couple of mistakes. although. He's the only one that hasn't really made any mistakes. He just obviously didn't have the best race pace at uh, Kimi Ring. Because he started on the front row, but he got a bit swamped by everybody. Through Kevin Schwantz corner then. Going to up the hill towards the quick left-right section. And then up horsepower hill it is. I'll try and maximise their exit. Oh, a bit of a wheelie there. I keep forgetting that this bike really wants to wheelie all the time. So another red sector, obviously we are the only guy to actually set a time yet. We have left Barry Bolters a little bit behind us, although it's probably not as much as I would have liked, so... Especially because then he's on an outlap, although the AI I don't think they particularly go any slower on an outlap than they do on an actual flying lap. Through turn 14. Coming up towards the line, one of the longer circuits again. So a 209.4. 
So I think that's around what we did in free practice three. So I'll head back to the pits, I'll fast forward a little bit and see if we're still on pole position. So yes, we are still on pole, but wow, we've got a mess up grid. So I'm on pole ahead of Russell Yamanaka in second, Albert Arenas third, who, yeah, you actually would expect to be near the front, but in this game he's not anywhere near the front. Uh, fourth for Carlos Tatai, fifth for Ayagora, sixth for Jeremy Alcoba, seventh for Dennis Fodger, Barry Baltus in eighth place, Romano Fanati in ninth, Yama Masia all the way down in tenth place, Suzaki eleventh, twelfth for Salach, thirteenth for Fernandez, fourteenth for Ricardo Rossi, fifteenth for Antonelli, sixteenth for Mino, seventeenth for Suzuki, the man that we know can put a quick lap together, and John McPhee in eighteenth, I suppose, for this game is not too out of touch, but the same with Aranas, he should be a lot better. I'm not sure what's going on with the AI there. They might put out a patch to fix that. Maybe when they update the actual liveries and stuff for Moto3, they might fix the performance as well, but I think we'll have done the season by then. But anyway, we'll head onto the grid now, and hopefully we can try and make it another win. Now, some of these other guys being at the front, like Yamanaka, actually might really help us out here, because like in the last race, Lopez obviously was second. So even though we didn't particularly have the pace of Suzuki and maybe Messia and Fodger, well, Fodger crashed himself out, but then Lopez being second held the rest of them up. of Vietti qualified last in 32nd place. Okay. There's been something that's really gone on with the uh, the standings in this one. But yeah, we've got a really, really big head start here ahead of our championship rivals. And to be honest, it's a struggle to call them rivals at this point. They are so far off now in the championship. But I need to select my tyres, otherwise that would be uh, pretty bad. But yeah, we'll uh, start the race and hopefully we can try and get another win out of this. Hopefully it's as entertaining as the first couple of laps of Kimi Ring were, though. We're only half a second faster than them, and I think that's probably what's going to happen if I don't do all the practice programs, because I've not had so much practice at the track. I think that makes it a bit more fun, really. It feels nice to be back on Paul. My riders looking over at Rosai Yamanaka, now but Aranas. Really, none of our championship rivals near us at all. Alright, and away we go. We've had a good start. I should not do the glitch start again, so just like in Well, Fodge is up to second, Fanati up to third, so I don't think it really mattered that they didn't start on the great starters positions. They are already back up into the positions they should be. And Fodger, Fodger's closing up to us massively. Fodger wants to make up for what happened in the last race. Obviously his crash really messed him up in the championship. And he wants to gain as many points as he can. We go down the straight then. Towards turn three, obviously it's easy to run wide here. I did that in the historic challenges not too long ago in MotoGP 19. Messia is back up to fifth, so these guys are coming through pretty quickly. I guess uh, Bruno is a track that's fairly easy to overtake on because of how wide it is. But Fodger is all over the back of us. He is not going to let us get away without a fight. We've got a fight on our hands for this race, I think. Dennis Fodger is going to want to make up for everything he did wrong in that last race, although it was only one mistake really. But he's going on the inside now. Just can't close him off. But he is all over the back of us. He definitely has some paces. Bit of crash behind Jeremy. Alcoba's gone down. But Fodger goes through. So does Fanati. We've got the run around the outside. Back past Fanati. Fodger has gone past us here. We're going back up the inside of Dennis Fodger though. Oh, yes, just in front of him. A bit of a hard move. But to be honest, he, he kind of sat up a bit unnecessarily. Uh, the AI still seem to have that trait where... I mean, I dive-bombed him, yeah. But I was actually in front of him. So there was no need for him to sit up. He could have just cut back underneath. But, uh, yeah, they're not the best predicting these things sometimes. Messiah's up to third already. But this is definitely helping Messia out. All this battle. Oh! Antonelli's come out of nowhere. Antonelli's now second place looking at the inside. Clipping my rear wheel a little bit there as we go through the Kevin Schwantz corner. But they I really want to give me a go this time. Oh! Antonelli's almost hit me again. Antonelli's starting to scare me a little bit. But yeah, the, uh, the fast AI have quickly made their way through the pack, haven't they? I'm guessing Fodger lost quite a bit of time from the uh, the weird sit-up. It was a little bit of an aggressive move, I will admit, but it, it was clean. I didn't touch him, so I'm not really sure why he sat up so much. Because uh, I was fully in front of him. So, you know, one of those things, weird AI behaviour. But we do lead at the end of the first lap, but it's not been us leading the entire way round it. People have been dive-bombing us a little bit. So at the end of the second lap, then we've got 6 tenths lead, a 2.10.0. So we can go a bit quicker... I know that for sure because we did it in practice and in qualifying. Obviously, I know that was with fuel mode 2, but we probably can still take a bit more time actually by just riding a little bit better. We've got to try and put a bit of a gap into Antonelli, but luckily no one actually passed us on that lap, so I think maybe we might be starting to make a little bit of a break. Coming to the end of lap 3 then, we weren't as fast on this lap, 
and the AI caught me up quite a bit. I'm guessing a new fastest lap will be coming, yes, from Dennis Fodger, 2097. So the AI getting faster as the race goes on. I am not. That is a bit of a problem. Coming up towards the line, then start the final lap. The AI are all over the back of me. I've not even up my pace, but they've definitely up theirs again on that lap. Antonelli was even sort of looking at the inside, I think, at a couple corners, but he wasn't close enough to make a move or anything like that. But this last lap could get particularly interesting. I can't save any fuel at this point because of how close we are. I've just got enough to make it to the end, I believe. And it looks like the layer parts have been beaten up again in the pack because it's Antonelli second, Fanati third, and then I think Messia fourth. So once again, the layer parts are going to be losing massive points to me. Seems like the last couple of races, they've just sort of lost a lot of pace. And to be honest, it seems like Fanati and Suzuki have gained a lot of pace. But Antonelli, as well, has really come of age. He's, he's three tenths behind us here. He, he could potentially have us. The AI are notoriously good at Brunel on every game. And it seems like that is no different here. Because I don't think I'm riding particularly badly, but they are very, very close to me, and they're definitely looking for a way around me. We've got about half a lap to go. Can we hold off Antonelli? We've run a little bit wide through Stadion. Here's the thing is, obviously, if you leave a little gap, they are, will go for it, but sometimes it is faster to leave a little gap and then cut back and get on the power. But they I don't see that. They just see a gap and go for it. And end up crashing into you. We've got three tenths of a second. That should be enough to keep him behind. He shouldn't be able to attack from that far behind, although he is really trying to get the best exit he can. Through the Kevin Schwantz corner, they did try and attack before, so I'll try and take that as tight as I can, although I've just left a yawning chasm on the inside there. And Antonelli is really closing up to us as we come towards the chicane before Horsepower Hill. I've really messed that up, actually. I've gone in way too hot. Can we get the exit down through Horsepower Hill? The rear is sliding. Obviously, the tyre grip, the edge grip's really gone. we got about half a second. We've got four tenths. We should be enough, but to be honest, they catch me massively through the penultimate and final turn. So Antonelli could have a go at trying to drag us to the line if we're not careful. Through the penultimate turn, I can hear his engine through the final turn. He is right behind us. I think he had a look to try and dive at the inside through the final corner, but it's going to be the closest race yet, I think, although he's lost quite a bit of ground out the last turn. 2.097. I did my fastest lap by quite a while in that last lap, but wow, the AI really wanted to give me a run for it. So then we won by half a second there. We did not even get fastest lap of the race either. That went to Alonso Lopez standing in ninth position, but wow, Antonelli gave me a good run for my money, and to be honest, every time the AI have been close to us, other than Kimi Ring, which was just purely because I didn't know the circuit. But the, the tracks where the AI have done really well, such as Bruno and Mugello, it's been Antonelli giving us the battles. Obviously, Dennis Fodger did take the lead briefly, and I think he never really recovered from the dive I did back on him. So that if you guys thought I was a bit too aggressive, I do apologise. But to be honest, I didn't touch him. Ralph Fernandez, seventh place. Best finish of the season for him. Also, we have that mess up grid. Celestino Vietti. He needs a round of applause. He's come through from 32nd to 10th. So obviously he's got to the lead of the second group. But he just wasn't enough, fortunately, for him. But well done to Celestino Vietti there. Uh, Russell Yamanaka dropped from 2nd to 14th. Where did Albert Aranas end up? 18th. Some of the other guys. Barry Baltus down in 22nd after his qualifying. Yuki Kuni was even near the front. I think he might have been. Carlos Tatai did well in practice. Well, Ricardo Rossi and Jeremy Alcoba. He crashed near the beginning. I guess he retired then. So let's move on and see how the championship is affected now with Messia finishing in a not very good position again. Actually, what position did he finish in? Messia finished fourth, so it wasn't too bad, and Fodger in fifth. But yeah, the Leopard boys not getting that, those two threes anymore. So then we now have an 82-point lead ahead of Yama Messia in second place in the championship. There's actually been a swap between the two 658 boys. Antonelli's now taken over ahead of Suzuki by a point, and they're probably closing in on Fodger together, although Suzuki did get beat by Fodger in that race, but... It's definitely a battle heating up for 3rd, 4th and 5th places. Actually, same with 6th as well, because Fanati's only a few points behind them. Mino again. So 3rd to 7th, not too far. I mean, really 4th to 7th, there's only 12 points between them. But uh, Fodger is not totally safe in front of them either. So we'll look onto the next screen now, the team's championship. So Leopard Racing now have a 60-point lead. 658 have took big inroads on us again, so they're only 9 points behind us now. But maybe this championship isn't totally over in terms of the team's championship. Obviously, they've got 70 points of 658, but if they keep sort of bottling good results, then it really could could swing, because they've been Mr. and Mr. Consistent, really, both of them. And it's all come undone in the last race. They didn't have the pace at Kimi Ring, and obviously Fodger just crashed. And then here, they didn't particularly have the pace either. 
I think the only other race where they didn't do too well was Mugello, and this did seem like a Mugello-esque race, so perhaps maybe they just don't work at circuits like this. But yeah, we'll head into the part fair. Maybe we'll actually get to see that this time, because obviously last time the uh, game crashed, so it was a little bit weird. And then we'll head into the career hub, and we'll end off the episode there. Yeah, so once this episode has been a massive swing in the championship for us, despite the fact that I thought, to be honest, we would be struggling... And the AI would beat us, especially since we've got to go to Kimi Ring and Bruno, which this has definitely been the hardest episode for me, but it's been the, probably one of our best in terms of gaining points on Messiah and Fodger. Fodger obviously had a crash in one race, didn't do too well in the other, and Messiah just was a bit average in both of them. I mean, fourth place isn't the end of the world for him, but he's been getting second a lot. So then, in reputation points, we gained 5,200. So yeah, we did get uh, more for getting pole position. We get uh, 550 more. So uh, we now got 65,750 reputation. Credits wise, I think we just get the same every time, 6,151. Now I've got 56,255 credits. Also, we've got lots of notifications going on here. So we've received another proposal. Who that, who's that from? 658 are interested in, in us, actually. Uh, again, I'll refuse because obviously it is for next season. Then we've also got a couple of things on the technical staff management. We've actually got new candidates for both Mario Bianchi's position as Chief Engineer and Isabella Ferreria's position as a Data Analyst. So we'll have a look then. So we've got Oliver Stevens. I think I might have just kept him on already. Then we've got Tepi Taku... Takasugi. Uh, he is better, but to be honest, we don't need to change the uh, technical staff anymore this season because we've already got the, ma the bike pretty much maxed out. So... We'll ignore him. I mean, as well, he's also an aero guy. So even next year for Moto2, I don't know if you actually carry over the staff. I'm guessing not, because this is the DHL Honda team. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think it's really worth signing him. Same with the data analyst, but we'll have a look. So we've got Andrea Be Benediti, I don't know. Again, he's an aero guy, so that really does help if you're a MotoGP. But, no, it doesn't, doesn't really uh, help us here, especially since, again, already we've already got the... We've got enough points to to upgrade everything so we're just waiting on time now so i think we'll have to leave it there so i hope you have enjoyed this episode it has been much better than a lot of the other ones because well we have battles with ai in both races obviously fodger crashing in one of them as well it was we had all the drama that we had the whole season pretty much just in one episode it was it was very good obviously i didn't get pole position for the first time messiah struggled you know it, it was great it was a really good episode i did enjoy it very much so i hope you guys did as well yeah, so like I said, I hope you did enjoy the video. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next video.